So I'm up at Install Alive and I've come onto the Intergas stand and who should I find on here but Mitch Cogger. I worked with him back in 2006, so that's a long time ago, isn't it? We were both young men then. <laughs> you were. So I'm really interested in Intergas. They do things differently. Their designs are really quite clever. The gas boilers themselves are one of the simplest ones to install with a fantastic range of heat exchangers which give maximum heat coverage as you well know yeah i'm sure you fitted a few in your time yeah and one of the great things is that you don't have to have all the heating up and running as soon as you pipe up the hot water you can run it so you can put your rads or your underfloor heating in later absolutely if you just want to get the hot water back on for the customer that's great you can do that without filling the whole system up so little things like that but plus the fact that we all have. the things that cause a trouble in combis you've kind of eliminated most of those we yeah. want to make it as easy for the installer especially considering the marketplace is still huge yeah. for the replacement boiler market something like 1.4 1.5 million yeah. boilers well i would talk to you about the whole idea which i think is misguided of doing away with gas boilers is the government's declared intention but i'm not going to talk to you about that because you also do heat pumps. We do. So and we're very pleased to demonstrate <laughs> our brand new R219 monoblock heat pumps. Blimey. Which are available in four different outputs. So when you say monoblock, what's that mean? In so this terms? heat pump has got a compressor inside it, a fan, it's got a circulation pump, a flow switch, and an air vent. And the other parts are fitted to a pre-plumb cylinder or as the installer wants to do it. So this makes it a monoblock. And there are various types of monoblock. Some include additional uh, expansion vessels and some include electric heaters. Would you be putting glycol into this? Well personally I think glycol protects the whole system full stop. Antifreeze valves have been around for a short period of time. I haven't personally seen them in practice but if there is a, uh, a, 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 a electricity breakdown whatever that duration is obviously the antifreeze valve is going to open, it's going to discharge, we don't know how much and uh, there could be some issues later on. At least with glycol, you're protecting the whole system. Yeah. And we still get them over okay. long periods. So um, we get asked quite a lot about buffer tanks and it seems that there's a complete division in the industry between heat pump manufacturers who say, yeah, fit a buffer, and those who say, not necessary, because of the hydraulic separation. So where do you stand on that, or don't you? Personally, I've always recommended fitting a buffer Buffers are really important for several reasons. Stopping the heat pumps from switching on and off, cycling, as we just mentioned, ensuring total system performance. When that heat pump goes into defrost mode, it's got to take that energy from somewhere, so it's got to come out of the heating circuit somewhere, and therefore, by having that buffer, you're saving yourself running costs yeah. and ensuring you've got comfort in your home. And right. we've got a range of buffers that are also available, as we've just launched today to install Alive. So the difference between not having a buffer and having a buffer when the defrost happens is that it would be dragging back through the heating system or what? Sorry. It, it, I think what the problem will be is you're actually reducing the lifespan of your heat pump ultimately by cycling on and off. Oh, and okay. also you've got comfort in the home. Yeah, yeah. The consumer itself might find that the temperature drops off as well. Yeah, okay. So you're making this, is this being made in the Netherlands? No, it's not. It's being manufactured by us in the Far East. Oh, okay, right. Ream, along, Ream. along with a lot of other ones. Well, everybody's working to make the cost down. The government want heat pumps to come down, but it's unlikely to be the case. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because they keep talking about the market maturing. But actually, it's quite a mature market, isn't it? It's been it around. has been. As you said, we've been doing uh, involved with heat pumps way yeah. back. 2006 yeah, right. was yeah. the first one. 250,000 new built properties. Legislation is fixed from 2026 that you've got to fit a heat pump. But of course, right now, you could fit a hybrid. And that's a real interesting topic where we've got existing boiler technology, could be retrofitted. We've just launched a mono hybrid unit so the installer doesn't have to interfere with uh, with refrigeration circuits and can be bolted straight on to a, a post ERP into gas boiler. Yeah, so you make the gas boiler. We do. So you've got the heat pump and the bit that talks to between the two of them. Yep, we manufacture that ourselves also, in our factory in Cavorden. What's that called? That's called the indoor IDU. Right, the indoor IDU. So that will basically say heat pump or gas, which is most efficient on the day. Correct, absolutely. Yeah, and so it makes it really intuitive and very simple, maximizing the cost savings and the comfort levels for the consumer. If you're on the cusp of, say, single phase or three phase, 
and you don't want to go to a three-phase supply, electricity supply, you can run a lower powered heat pump and have a gas boiler for those days when Absolutely. the heat pump can't so, cope. You know, heat pumps are measured according to EN 14511, measured at A7W35, that's how we measure heat pumps. So the hybrid heat pump itself is a real positive add-on to an existing heat, uh, gas boiler that's on there. And we've been able to demonstrate this a lot in Holland, where they've been successfully trialling hybrids to hundreds of thousands of homes there for quite a number of years. And it's an easy win-win situation for UK homeowners. You also make a cylinder which connects We do. Because well, not into the hybrid, but into our heat pump we do, and to gas boilers, which are system and regular boilers. Right, so the hybrid is the combi. Yep. Right, so if you've got stored hot water, you've got a situation where uh, you want a heat pump and you don't want the gas boiler, you've got a solution there. We do, yeah? and we make those in our factory in the north of Holland. So, anyway, th these are your cylinders. You're making these in the north of Holland. Indirect, direct, and heat pump cylinders from 150 to 300. And the heat pump cylinder's got a bigger coil, is that it? It has the two sizes of coiling depending upon the capacity that you've got. 200 litre plus to 300, it's a three metre coil. And below that, it's about 1.8 to 2. At the risk of offending you, isn't this just another cylinder? The answer is not. We've done a lot of voice of the customer and we took a lot of time to consider what should we do differently. We're a new entrant into an existing flooded market. Firstly, we've got the control of the quality and the manufacturing in our own capable hands. Two, we made a 30 degree arc on the components here. So when it's fitted into the 600 cupboard, which is really tight, the installer like yourself can get in there, easily get to the components, and it's, it's a much easier installation for the installer. The units themselves, are made with a different grade of higher quality steel than that's used in the UK. It's called S444, which is a high resistant corrosion quality stainless. In addition to that, we've also got a EPS grade uh, insulation with graphite, which helps reduce the amount of heat in a far better way than expanded EPS. Right, I know the graphite. That's the same thing they use in external walling. That's right. So we've taken a lot of thought about this to ensure that when the units are situated, the consumer doesn't lose the heat in a quicker way than you would normally do. And the coil positioning has also been changed around to ensure you get maximum heat reheat time in a quicker period. And we've also demonstrated with our coils inside that it's got Damascus barrels. Now you may be familiar with that, but I'm a shooting guy. And Damascus barrels means that you get greater turbulence inside. So if you've got normal corrugated uh, pipe inside or flat steel, you've only got obviously the outer surface of the water, but you've got velocity and twist which ensures you get maximum coverage of the water going in and a quicker reheat time needed for the cylinder, obviously resulting in a shorter time to heat it up and less cost for the consumer. So that's basically just a spiral inside. Absolutely, it? yeah. It just stops it spinning round. Yeah. Right? Does that make it noisy? No, we've taken efforts to make sure that the noise levels are also covered inside that and with the casing it reduces the noising well. These come with a 25 year guarantee as well. Are there any we, conditions for that? Do you need to fit uh, any kind of scale prevention device to get that? No, it's not necessary for that. What we've also considered is about the fact that we've used the titanium coated immersion heater as well to improve the longevity in hard water areas. We would recommend you fit a lime scale reducer, which you can buy from some of the brands on, in, in, uh, on, on demonstration today, because obviously in the southeast of Tetra, it's a big area of hard water. If I see you in another 20 odd years... You and I will be retired. I'll be, I'm not retiring. Nor am I. <laughs> nice to see you, Cheers. Roger.